Ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 25-8, our second podcast anniversary celebration number five. Wait, yes, <laughs> that's how it goes. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. And every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. Um, we pick a topic, we choose some great music, and we listen to the music, and we talk about the music, and we talk about other stuff too. Um, last week we celebrated five years of Rhythm and Pixels, of, of this podcast. That's over 250 episodes of me and Pernell and it got to be n- talking in your ear. <laughs> Being goofy, yeah. having a great old time. No, the funny thing about it is like Rob was like, we were talking about today about hey it's great you know we've been doing this for a while now and we've got stories for years with this bad boy so let's march on and then for some reason I got to thinking are we the longest running podcast for VGM right now now keep in mind when I say that I don't mean oldest because the oldest I believe is uh, Legacy Music Out I think they so. gave it the yeah. first uh, but longest running as in from start to consecutive or start to start I'm sorry from the beginning consecutively non-stopping and unfortunately it turned out i was wrong but we're really surprisingly close um <laughs> but what'd the, you say earlier you said it was super mercado brothers so the super mercado brothers started um eight years ago six years ago and they have twice as many episodes as us Mm-hmm. I guess it must have been eight years ago. So, um, and that's very impressive. I I, I believe that they are. Um, I, I mean, I've met them. They're fantastic guys. I haven't I listened to their show to be quite honest because <laughs> I'm a bad podcast listener. I'm a great podcast producer, the best, and a po- great podcast friend <laughs> and a friend. Uh, um, but yeah, what? but and then uh, yeah, the Legacy Music Hour was in 2010. I forget. I told mm-hmm. you. I told you this. It was but they started in 2010 for sure. Um, but but that, that's the thing, though. I think we had more consecutive, well, more consecutive for sure, but also I think more total episodes mm-hmm. than that. Well, I can say that we have the most, we have the sexiest episodes, right? We have, and, and um, I don't know. It was probably. Sexy. I just think of it more like from the perspective of just like, it's just surprising that that happened at all. Like, <laughs> It literally started as you'd be like, I miss Legacy Music Arrow. We should do a show. <laughs> it was like, okay, that was five years I, ago. So funny. I, I, and I never, I didn't really explore what other podcasts were out there because I thought that that might be too, um, it might, it might make me not want to do it. You know, it might, um, apprehensive. Yeah. Apprehensive. That's the word. I can't think of a word. Man, it's so the last show we recorded was around noon. Right. And I had tons uh-huh. of energy. <laughs> These shows we record late, tur in the evening, mm-hmm. and I do not we have energy. I'm anyway, a Viking, so I didn't really look at what other shows were around at the time when I started recording because I didn't want to feel that way. Um, and so we just started, but I didn't know that uh, Pixel Tunes Radio was out there and all these other shows were doing their thing. And I was like, man, we're doing the only we're the only ones doing it. We're the only ones doing it in Delaware. <laughs> 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 that that part's still true. That's still true. No one tell us that. No one tell us about that other Delaware VGM podcast, Pixels and Rhythm. There's like an evil Robin Purnell out there somewhere. I know. <laughs> That's what I honestly be like. Brevity, brevity, and sprites. It's a yeah. Brevity, it's a it's a it's a cooking podcast. No, it's a true crime podcast. Actually, I would love to meet <laughs> Nega Purnell if he's doing a true crime podcast. Ooh. That would be legit. Um, actually, right. with this voice, <laughs> yes. And right. they never found. It's documentation i don't want to be well there is a sinkhole in the and like that they're trying to fill up and i'm wondering like what you're hiding in that sinkhole pernell water well you uh, i mean why would you hide all that water unless you were trying to hide something (laughs) because i melted gold into the water um for everybody listening for everybody in our chat room right now um we have a sale going on uh we are offering 15 percent off all of our t-shirts all of our merchandise we have a very some very interesting t-shirt designs. So if you go to rhythmandpixels.com slash merch, um, you can check out all the designs there. And then uh, use offer code PIXELS and you get 15% off your purchase. And that's from now until the end of the year. So let's end 2020 with some fresh t-shirts, right? Um, and also we're partnering with our podcast host, Blueberry. That's B-L-U-B-R-R-Y. Go to rhythmandpixels.com slash podcast podcast. 
and use offer code pixels there to get your first month free. So if you want to start your own, your first podcast, or if you want to maybe upgrade the podcast you're doing right now, um, check them out. I think they're fantastic. Great download speed, great statistics, great support. It's blueberry, baby. I'm going to demonstrate oh. you. <laughs> I'm getting warm, man. I'm taking my shirt off. A sweater. Taking my sweater off. Ew. This is this is for the live show. We should also say that this is a live Patreon recorded episode. So if you are a member of our Patreon, um, once a month you get access to a live streamed recorded episode of our show, which is what we're doing right now. You hang out in the chat room and you can see all the visual gags that me and Purnell do. Hey! We don't have visual gags. Who are you fooling? I'm trying to, but it's not working. How many? T- you get to see how many times we adjust our glasses. Yeah. How many times I, I move just my microphone it. around, and I'm like, ooh. Um, <laughs> but that's a lot of fun, so uh, that's what we're doing today. And so today's episode, Purnell, it, we are doing... Um, um, so last week, we, we talked about our favorite tracks of the whole year, and we had some we shared some memories of our favorite episodes and our favorite moments and our um, favorite um, emails that we got from some listeners, too. Uh, that was last week. So this week, we asked our listeners and our Patreon members, what were your favorite tracks? What were your favorite moments of the show? And we got a few. And so we thought we would choose some music based on what they sent. Yeah, it was a weird scenario here because, like, I think this was a, mo- a particularly weird month because I think we had, like, two different topics in mind. And then the podcast anniversary was like, oh, yeah, we should probably do that yeah. <laughs> because that just makes sense. And then we didn't put it out for a bit. But even though we put it out, we didn't put it out to when we did. We still got a fair number of responses, which was nice. Yeah, we really did. Um, so uh, hopefully they're OK with us reading their emails on the show. <laughs> well, all that, there's a lot of swearing in this one. I don't know if we can read that. Oh, man. Well, we'll have to bleep you out. I got the I got the bleep button ready for now. Oh, yeah. Um, so what have you been playing this week? I, I I don't think I asked you that yet. I know what I want you to play, which is Control, because it's a fun game. But yeah, I feel like you're going to get your wish because of Chris Murray. Um, Chris Murray threw the ball out there. He was like, hey, if you want to play Control, I'm playing Control. I can play Control. I was like, done. Because I, we'll never have a live Mulan of two moment again. <laughs> but I think we can still get you know, co-op, you know, community, community gaming going in that sense. Because it's a beautiful thing. Um, but I'm going to start that up again. Uh, I got hooked on Yakuza Like a Dragon. I am a, I am pretty sure that's going to be my game of the year at this point. Like now, keep in mind, I've played, I haven't played every AAA game that came out this year. Oh, hush. You ain't no like, you're going to make me stop playing it with that. <laughs> that's all you're going to hear. <laughs> no. Um, well, like I've played a lot of games this year. I, admittedly, I didn't jump in like every single big AAA release or anything like that. But I've played a lot of new games this year, and I still feel like this one is probably going to be the one. Like it, I am caught up in it. I love the dynamic between you know, the characters. The main character is insanely endearing. The mini games are addictive. There's a mini game where you're riding a bike collecting cans to recycle, and I spent two hours on that. You're like I know that. I've done that. <laughs> I grew up doing that. I yeah. know. Oh. And uh, the last mini game I got caught up in for like four hours was one where you're managing a business. <laughs> like you're literally managing it. You got to buy locations. Um, you have to staff them with employees. You have to do shareholders and meetings. Honest, that looked interesting to me. That looked pretty cool. It, it's freaking great. Yeah. Um, so I'm playing that. And I think the other game that came up in the Pernell you should play that I requested was Bloodstain. But it, no, I came up because of Daryl on um, the last Recon suggestion through his like is Rhythm and Pixels chat mini game of this five games and someone will choose the one for you to play from your backlog. So I'm also going to be playing Bloodstained. So I got a trio of games mm-hmm. that I'm playing this month. I love it. We'll see how well I do in any of them. I love it. But I love that you're going through your backlog. That's fantastic. Now if I could just stop buying games. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I just bought $100 in, be- in a eShop credit on Cyber Monday because it was on sale. Ooh. I'm a sucker for discounted money. I can't help it. It's a problem. <laughs> um, oh, I want to give a shout out to Chris Baines. E's, eShop reminded me that Chris Baines, um, one of our listeners and one of our friends um, and a really excellent musician. Uh, he's been putting together these like historian uh, documentary, like video game documentaries and, and history they're of, and they're really great. And the last one he did, he did like, like a quick little one shot. It was like five, six minutes about an MMO of the, from the Ease series that never got released in the West. 
Um, and it's really cool. And, and he's got one for Super Monkey Ball, and he's got one for Symphony of the Night. And I really, I really hope he does more because they're, they're really well done. They're really funny they and they're entertaining. And you, you learn a lot from them, so the stuff that I didn't know about. So, and most importantly, he's genuinely passionate about them, and it comes out in his work. Yeah, so um, I want to support him um, because I think that's really cool. So it's Chris Baines Music on YouTube, um, and we also link it on our on our Facebook page as well. But okay, Pranav. So last week you went first because I lost the. No, I didn't lose the the rock paper scissors. You, oh, you lost. You did dynamite. You lost. <laughs> Dynamite's a valid move. Lost. Well, just, you, just accept it. Just accept it. You know, I win. What's funny? Boom. Was that last week was an odd numbered episode anyway? <laughs> True. Well, there it is. I had the I had the heart of the episodes on my side. You had the home field advantage. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to start this week. Um. So as if it's cool with you, maybe we can go down the list of the Google Doc. I like that idea. I'm good for it. Just try to keep it keep it simple. All right, so I'm going to start with the first track. This is from OK Impala. Um, and uh, he, I'll, I'll watch this. We'll, we'll read the email, and then we'll we'll play some tracks based on what he wrote. Does that sound, sound pretty good? I was about to say, we have to because he didn't submit a track. <laughs> okay. Here we, uh, yeah, of course. Um, so anyway, so this is uh, from OK Impala, and he says, or they say, uh, I really enjoyed your Console Wars episode, which, which I did too. Uh, Purnell mentioned how Super, Super Mario Kart was still one of his favorite racing games of all time, and I couldn't agree more. Recently, I released a gaming project of mine that has been in the works for 17 years. It's called Super Mario Kart Epic Racers. This mod of Super Mario Kart gives you a whole new experience with new tracks, new graphics, new drivers, a new point system, and more. The mod has been received with lots of positive feedback from the community and has appeared on several YouTube channels. So I actually looked those up, too. I actually did watch a few of them. because yeah. I mean, we're talking about... He did have a lot. It's like... One of them had like 3,000 views, and it's only been up for two weeks. It's... it's like, I mean, like, Mar- Super Mario Kart is my favorite Mario Kart. So, and, and, and having a mod to that with, with new tracks and stages and characters, that's really cool. And they actually have stat points, which threw me off, too. But it makes me wonder if the original one had stat points aside from just their weight. I wonder. Yeah. I, I, they might have added... No, because of the weapon system, it was kind of the same for everybody. But you're right. Like They're all kind of weighted a little differently and just different sized. Um, no, no. They had different speeds and they had different acceleration. Yeah, that, that's what he did. But he referred to it as boost and speed. Oh, nice. So I wasn't sure if that was like just a way of visual interpretation of their weight class. Right, right. Not just knowing that, okay, Yoshi does this and Bowser does that. Um, but exactly. anyway, anyway, that's really, really cool too. So go check that out. Look them up on YouTube and then um, follow the links there if you ever want to try it. So we both picked some music from Mario Kart games. I chose from Mario Kart 64, which I can't believe we haven't played from, I think, ever on our show before. This is Toad's Turnpike, composed by Kente Nagata. This, okay, so I listen to every track on the soundtrack because I don't have a whole lot of experience with, with Mario Kart 64. Um, so I didn't have a Nintendo 64. 
and holy moly this is this is the best one for me like i i can't think of a like all the other tracks pale in comparison to this one this is so good for me i think it's still wario stadium which is interesting because i actually could hear a variation of that theme in this track oh yeah i'm sorry not not wario stadium and um royal waste raceway the type of track that plays there i don't think wario is in this game right no, nah, he well, he didn't. No, he's in '64. Wario's um, he not, didn't exist. Not real. Though. There he is. Like he's he's like a he's like a myth, like an internet myth, right? No, that's Waluigi. Luigi. <laughs> Wario's real. Waluigi's the myth. <laughs> no, he's very very real, and he's angry. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to smash. But like, no, nah, but honestly, Mario Kart '64. I don't know. It's not particularly my favorite as the, in the series, but I think as far as the battle mode goes, it's still my all time favorite of the mm. bunch. It hasn't been topped yet. Um, I'm not sure why, per se. It might just be because of Block Fort, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, but- it's it's more three-dimensional, right? So the battle modes in the original Mario Kart, they were fun, but it was all flat. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like kind of juking and strafing and bouncing around each other. But this one, I know in Mario 64, Kart 64, it's much more vertical. There's places you can hide. But the thing about it is that since then, there have been multiple Mario Karts that have all been in 3D with the exception of, like, say, like the Game Boy Advance ones. So 3D isn't the sole practice, isn't the sole factor for this. I think it's speci- it may specifically be Blockport because there's something about that track or that battle arena that I don't think has been touched yet. And they won't even bring it back in sequels. That's what makes me the anger. It's <laughs> like Blockport is the best. Though so there may be one that it came back. I have to double check, but I feel like I complained about it not including a specific element that made it good in the first place. I digress. Um, shouldn't ramble too much about Mario Kart. I guess, I guess we can, because no, we technically can. the one I picked is for Mario <laughs> Kart Super say, Nintendo. So I, 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 love, I love that little voice sample that goes, oh, and I love the bass in this track. The bass is super good. And then when that um, arpeggio comes in, it's super, super sweet. because it's. Are you familiar with Toad's Turnpike at all? Like the levels, the is design that the, of it? Is that the one where there's cars coming at you? Oh, no, not at you, though. I think there's a mirror mode where they can. Mm. But the normal version, you're riding with the traffic. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm slightly familiar with the game, but, like, not super. Like, I've, I've seen some gameplay. Um, back when, back during college, I was visiting a friend of mine, Larry. He was going somewhere in PA. And when I went there, he was sharing a house with, like, six other people. And what this is what they did. They just played Mario Kart 64. Like, that was their thing. They had the N64... They had controllers and they had beers, and that's what they did. <laughs> that was their thing. So. That's a good way to go about it, I think. Though, like Mario Kart is up there with Mario Party for like Mario-based uh, multiplayer games that will ruin friendships. I was gonna say, yeah, right, like or solidify them. Because I'll tell you right now, one of my favorite you know gaming gathering events that I remember in history was like back when Mario Kart Double Dash was new, mm. which is the only time people wanted to play because everybody hated on Double Dash for reasons I don't understand. Uh, it's too much uh, too much cooperation was, was required, right? Not even. Like, only if you chose that mode, which at this particular instance, we did. It was a good solid room of like eight people playing Mario Kart, two per cart, and uh, you were doing the um, multiplayer. So if you did two on one cart, the way it worked is one person drove, one person handled weapons unless you switched. But in order to do the drifting, you both had to do the motion for getting the drifts and you had to time it so that you get them off right and you can nail them. Mm -hmm. So the guy I was rolling with was our mutual friend, Nate. And when it got down, I was like, look here, I know you haven't played much, but we're going to get through this. I'll drive the car. You just handle the weapons. And when we do the drifting, I'll time it out. And we were playing it. And every time I drift, I was like, click, 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 click. It was like the dumbest, most awful sound. But he started doing it too. We were timing it based off of it. Like, click, 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 click. And we were just getting blue sparks like that. It, people were getting pissed because we weren't going down. And of course, the talks, the trash talk started coming out because that's what you do. You talk trash in Mario Kart. And um, people cut off my beers. It wasn't fun. <laughs> they cut you off? They cut my beers off because I was winning too much. Wait, so then they, 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 would, they would add more beers if you were winning too much, right? You would think, but apparently they thought they were like they didn't realize that they could have been they could have been handicapping me, but instead they just were trying to punish me. So either way, I came out on top there. What's, but what's the one that was on the on the Switch recently? Was that eight? 
That was eight. Yeah, that, eight is a jam. I played that a whole bunch a couple of years ago at the beach with my uh, my nieces, and that was that was so much fun. Um, I did enjoy playing against the computer. I did not enjoy playing against um, a couple of children who've never played Mario Kart before. <laughs> Well, but they hit you like, weapons I, like crazy. Like I'm not using weapons. I'm not doing anything. I just know how to drift. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey. so you picked some Mario Kart tunes too, right? Yeah, and it's always funny when I go to these tracks and I check the database, and it turns out that I somehow never chose this track. I chose a cover of it in the past, way back in like World One. Oh wow! But never That's the right. track proper. So, without further ado, this is my favorite track from Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. It is the Donut Plains, and it is composed by Soya Oka. Listening to the Donut Plains from Super Mario Kart on the SNES, composed by Soya Oka. And yeah, this is my jam. This is a danceable beat. It's good. Um, it's so good. I mean, it's fun. I almost, maybe we should do a danceable tunes episode in coordination with the sing alongs episode <laughs> because that's a dancer. And I won't be able to pick it again, but I'm sure there's other. No, it's not sing alongs. We're doing jingles. Oh, jingles. That's what it is. Yeah, like, like real quick. Like when you do the thing, you like that thing I eat, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. That's going to be rough. That's going to be hard to, hard to time over the internet. I don't know whose product that's advertising, but I don't want it. <laughs> it just sounds addictive. But like, the Donut Plains is a track that stands the test of time. And I'm actually glad because there's um, Solo Sanctuary mentioned her love of Mario Kart 8. And so did you. And I'm glad that happened in this context because, if I remember correctly, Donut Plains got a revival. Both track and tune in oh. that game. And it's cool in there because in that game they had the, the motorcycles and they added uh, various, like, you know, bump mechanics and things of that nature. So it changes the track up in such a way that it is truly a brand new course. It's wonderful. But you know what came back also? The be- oh, getting getting stuck on the sand, huh? No, no, the beat like this music. No, they changed. There's oh, no the sand beats. in Donut Plains. The beach. <laughs> oh no, the beat. No, there's no sand in Donut Plains. That jerkbag Monty Mole. It should be a uh, Soya Oka Oka Montana and Miami Max. Sound Machine. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's odd side note. While this was playing, while the track was playing, I was watching myself on the camera. I started thinking, like, man, I need to do something about the background here because. <laughs> It seems so weird. Like, I have tons of cool stuff that would be awesome to see in the background. Like, for example, I have, you know, a wall of Garbage Pail Kid cards. Yeah. Like, I have tons of Garbage Pail Kids behind me. You could do that. I have every, like, all my video games are, like, around me. But the way the room is laid out, I have a stack of Amiibos in the corner <laughs> that I just need to sell because I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I, I have... And behind me is just... Is just... Um, a room ac- acoustic paneling <laughs> but like yeah. I- I've been watching a lot of DJs online because like there's no there's no raves at it, like right now and there's no parties so what they're doing is they're doing a lot of live shows streaming but <laughs> what they're doing a lot of them like they, they, set, they, they take their, their their turntables or whatever and they put them in the middle of the room and they have the camera and they put like they do like a light show in their house or some of them do it in their kitchen and they have like they put plants everywhere to make it look pretty but like you imagine like if, if your stuff is at home, it's usually against the wall, you know? And that's where my stuff is. So if I want to do that, I got to take everything out, put it in the middle of the room. And on camera, it looks great, I'm sure. 
but like having all your crap in the middle of the room is no fun. <laughs> It's no good. And that would be the problem. If I wanted to truly pull this off, I'd almost have to put the desk in the middle of the room, or at least my recording spot in the middle of the room. It's so always you could like look at my freaking PS4 collection of games. Or we could do like know. a green screen situation. That might be feasible. That could be interesting. Get one of those big gamer green screens behind you, and we'll just I can put, put, put up a Kingdom Hearts wallpaper. It'd be just as confusing as the game. <laughs> Oh man, well I'm I'm really happy you picked Donut Plains because I think this is a this is a fun party party team. Mm. Um, mm. So our next email, our next uh, kind email, comes from the I, last Reekin. I gotta read this one. Man. Yeah, I, was gonna I say, gotta like, read it. You, you two kind of share a voice in my mind. You're both loud. <laughs> <laughs> We're both competitive, and both it shows it when we speak. Oh yeah, and then this 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 mess right here. I love them. Oh my god. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> man, man, what a wild ride this year has been. And I'm glad I got to spend it with you guys. Getting me through my work days participating in the BGM Fight Club, I have to say that I'm truly grateful to have you guys be a part of my daily life. But with that being said, I would like you to play Beneath the Mask with Persona 5 for two reasons. One, get it. It marks the first time Rob has actually played a JRPG in years that isn't Final Fantasy X. Right. That's correct about that. That's correct, yes. Now, number two, because it beat out Purnell's track in the second round of the matchup between you two. Suck it, Purnell. <laughs> Here's the hoping for many more years of Rhythm and Pixels. Cheers, and I drink in the name of your glory. Oh. First of all, thank you so very much, Last Rick. You're an awesome gent, and I'm glad to be your friend for many years. You're a great dude. Second of all, that contest was rigged, and I should have won, but I digress. All I gotta say is you are guaranteed to lose if you don't vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right, and so, I did not. So uh, so, uh, so he chose this music, and this is my track. This is Beneath the Mask by Soji Maguro from Persona 5. And this is the reason I've actually turned all the voices off in the game, because I just want to hear this music. Yeah, you can't turn the voices. Off. Yeah, and and during the the fight scenes too, like during the battles, I'm I'm tired of hearing this kid scream, Persona, <laughs> Captain Kid. Yeah, over. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Beneath the mask. All along 
just a cage of bones. There's nothing inside. Will it always be burning down the walls? Is there a way for me to? And we're back. You're listening to Beneath the Mask from Persona 5, composed by Shoji Maguro, with lyrics by Lin. Such a good song. I love, love this it. song. I first heard this song on um, uh, Cutman Radio, um, which is DJ Cutman's kind of live stream of lo-fi hip-hop and lo-fi hip-hop versions of video game tunes. And Study tune? Yeah, it was like study music and stuff. And I knew it was from Persona 5, but then I thought like someone actually put lyrics to it. And then when I started playing the game and realized that this theme is played a lot throughout the game, it got me very excited that I get to hear the music again. And then I heard the lyrics because the music only with the lyrics, they only play at night. And I was like, oh, that's so good. That's so good. It's just this game is dripping with style. So much style. Yes, it is. So cool. Yeah. And it's a trip too, because like, and I think Soul is Sanctuary can relate to this. I think she's entrenched in the community just like I am. Mm-hmm. Is that people in the Megaton community love to hate on this game? Really? And oh yeah, like there's this there's this whole world of people. It goes it comes in two waves. One wave is people who just straight up hate the fact that the game gets so much praise, and, you know, and love built around it. Um, I think that's insane because whether or not you believe the game is the best of the Persona series or the Megaton franchise for that matter, it's still a good game in its own right. And it does what it needs to do. It's a fantastic tongue. But then there's another group of people, and this one I do kind of get behind in a slight extent because I've had this chat in regards to other stuff on the show, is that the fan base can get crazy about it, like almost fervent, like port to the Switch. No matter what's going on, support the Switch. I'm like, no, just get a PS4. Is it, on, is it only on the Sony? It's only on PS4, oh. yeah. But it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, every once in a while, a, a system needs a killer app or two, you know? In this case, the PS4 just happens to be Persona 5. Like, maybe it doesn't need to get ported. Like, you, so P5 is on the P4. Do you think the P5 will be played on the P5? I'm sure I wouldn't be surprised if this game is backwards compatible on the P5. Yeah. Um, exactly. See, some of us know. She knows. I was like, they're way too crazy. Yeah, it's like, like it gets to the point where somebody will be like, hey, we're going to announce this brand new Unmegaton game. Like, it has nothing to do with the series. And they're like, where's P5, you jerks? Where's Persona 5? And I'm like, maybe we'll just stop announcing games entirely because we're tired of being harassed by crazy people. <laughs> but... My, you know, my personal take on the game is that I love it. Like, it got me back in the game. I had a bad time. Mm-hmm. Um, I still talk about it. I bought Royal, and I keep telling myself to buy it and play it. But I, I'm not buy, it, but to play it. But I just it's suck at lot. the idea. It's a lot of time commitment when there's other. Yeah, to retread. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff at the end, but they should have just been like, "Hey, do you want to just go to the end with a preset vote out of players so you can experience the new content?" That's what they should offer. No, uh, they're like. You got another hundred hours, bro. Just get to it. I'm like, I really don't. Um, but I bought the game because I had that intent of trying. It's supposed to but rain bo- like all weekend or on Saturday. So I think I'm going to play a lot of this game on Saturday. And just loop this track when you're doing anything else. Anything else. I love this song. I love this song Literally. so much. If only it came with teleportation to your favorite stores and restaurants. I only so- wish that I played this song on the show last year in the last year so that I could play it as my top one of my top five. <laughs> what do you mean top five of oh this year? Yeah, exactly. Well well that just means next year you have something to look forward to. That's right. You all do. You all do. <laughs> Cause it's coming back. It's coming back. Alright, so what, what did you I know it won't one? be your top I know it won't be your top track for next year. What's that? That's my choice. <laughs> because 
I went in the exact opposite direction because I felt that this was not only a fitting choice because I liked this track in the game, but also because of Last Rika's comment about me losing in round two of the contest for Fight VGM Fight Club. I didn't know so this, this track was going to do so well. I thought it was like, this is super chill. I'm choosing the music that I want to hear. Oh no, it's a good track. I love it, but I love the entire OST. But it's this Purnell we're talking about. So at the end of the day, I like tension. I like, you know, stress. And Blooming Villain is totally tension and stress in a game OST track. So this is Blooming Villain from the PlayStation 4 game Persona 5. I almost said PlayStation 5. Thanks, Robert. Um, <laughs> composed by Shoji Meguro. You're listening to Blooming Villain from the game Persona 5 on the PlayStation 4 composed by Shoji Meguro. Yes, I think this is a very fitting track for my mind state in regards to coming back for a... What is that? What do you call it? Oh, Vengeance Battle against Rob because <laughs> it needs to happen. It may, be, it may well end up being good you know, handing purposes for if we get that Magfest panel, but ultimately, I love this track in addition. So, it's good. Blooming Villain. It's really yes, good. Like, this is the boss theme from Persona 5. And uh, did you beat the first palace, by the way? I don't remember. I did, yes. I'm, I'm like halfway through the second palace. Oh, my favorite part's coming up. Where like, kind of breaks down. Yeah. What kind of calms it like? Yeah, it's like ever, all the bands like looking at each other. The bass players <laughs> looking at each other. Are they still fighting? They are still fighting. Part of the heat. Um, time, like, time, 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 time to give it to them. It's funny, to <laughs> like, when I played this game and got to that first boss battle, like, well, I was playing, well, as we know, I, I tend to do hard mode runs in this game, so what ends up happening is in order to save time and social activities on the original version of this, I only did one run per palace. Like, the game didn't force you to exit. Yeah. I never left. Well, you told me so, that, so that's what I'm doing on the second palace. The first palace, and, I nearly ran out of time, because <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go do laundry i got i got a job and they're like you know this teacher's abusing kids right we gotta stop him i'm like all right i gotta go to the batting cage (laughs) big bang burger yeah there's a burger i gotta try to finish there's a talking cat i don't know what's going on (laughs) but like as a result and you're going to experience this if this is your first time trying it is that even on normal probably it's hard early on to do like one run dungeons because your magic starts draining yep. and you have no way to get it back. So you're like kind of dodging jerks and all that stuff. And what ends up happening is you potentially could end up under level too. So when you get to a boss 
and he's doing all this jerk tricks and everything, if you don't have a decent persona stable, they could give you trouble. But this track has a lot of, you know, much appreciated attention to those squam squalls. Now, when I first heard this track, I was coming hot off of Persona 4's I'll Face Myself, which I loved as a boss theme back. Mm-hmm. It's still good now, too, no lie. But I was listening to this one, and I was like, eh, this isn't an I'll Face Myself. This is kind of weak. It's a weak sauce mess. But halfway into that Kamoshida fight, I was in. I was like, okay, you know what? I take that back. I think this is definitely yeah. as good, if not better, than I'll Face Myself. Yeah, the this game is does a, a good job of, of ramping up the tension with the story during the fight and then mm-hmm. this this guitar solo right here is fun it's just super cool like it makes you feel like yeah you can do it this is a battle this is a battle for yeah. battles right here we have mm-hmm. to take that cram gotta now, take their hearts are you, re- are you ready for a different kind of battle I don't know I don't know what is the battle does it involve candy <laughs> no this battle oh, you, you might win candy <laughs> no this battle is a quiz this is a video game quiz, Pernell. I call this the origin story. All right, so what, well, first question is, what's the topic? Um, it's origins. It's video game character origins. So think about okay. game characters and think about where they came from. So I had to take a gamble on how many questions will Pernell nail out of 10. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we're going to play. Um, I'm going to tell you the character, and you have to tell me where they came from. Like the person okay. they came from, it's, and it starts super easy, so that you'll you kind of get the of where I'm coming from, okay? Okay. So uh, we, we're going to say, is this an origin story? Here we go. Mega Man. So like, like where, na- you name Mega Man, and I got a name is origin story. Yeah. That where did he come from? Who made who made Mega Man? Oh, Doctor Light. Doctor Light. Very good. All right. Proto Man. Doctor Wily. It was Dr. Light. No, it wasn't. Yeah, Dr. It was. Wily made Proto Man. No, Do- Dr. Light. He was, he was the first, and then he made Mega Man. Oh, no. You know what? Maybe I confused him with Zero, because that's a whole... Yeah, you probably... Anyway. probably did. Anyway, I want to give that one to you. That's fine. That's okay. Here we go. Ready for the next one? No, no, that's cheating. That's, I, I can't get it, because there's, there's money <laughs> on the line here. But I didn't get it. All right, number three. Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. Who made the Nemesis? I want to say Umbrella, but it could also be like William Birkin, maybe. I will accept Umbrella. It was specifically Umbrella Europe. <laughs> oh, Christ. Freaking like a, a branch corp. I know, right? All right, number four. You ready for number, yeah, number four? Number four. Frog from Chrono Trigger. Trigger. Who Wouldn't his origin frog? be Magus? That'd be Magus. Very good. Those Megas. I'll try to catch you with that one. Because he was. What was I gonna say? His mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you came out and it was like, yeah, his biology name. made frog. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, Mary and Reginald. <laughs> Mary and Reginald <laughs> Frog. <laughs> ah. All right. Here we go. Next one is Titus. Who made Titus? Well, when a man and a woman <laughs> love each other very much, they call him sin. <laughs> and then, uh, I guess that could be a weird question because on one hand, you'd obviously could say like Jet and his parents. I should probably say that there's, there's spoilers say throughout sin. this whole thing because we're talking about the origins of these characters. So this game is ancient. I think it's okay, <laughs> but based on the, what you're going with here, I'm going to guess you actually intended to re- for me to refer to Sin since he's a, a dream of his. Uh, yes, the faith actually. Sin is also a dream of the faith. It was the faith. Um, oh, your love of that. That's plastic. fine. Crash Bandicoot. Who made Crash Bandicoot? Dr. Neo Cortex. <laughs> Dr. Neo Cortex it is. So there was my original um, quiz was to was for you to guess the character based on their nicknames. That they're like the blue bomber would be Mega Man, and Crash Bandicoot actually had a different name. What um, was he? Like the freaking Marsupilami? <laughs> no, it was like Crash it was like Crash Banditex. It was like the first or something. Dr. Neo named him after himself. It was really strange. I don't know stuff that you, stuff you probably would only ever know reading the uh, the instruction manual of these games. <laughs> All right, uh, Glad Glados. Glados, shoot, that's a bad from one. Portal. Who made Glados? Oh. With the Aperture Science. Aperture Science. 
I forgot the name of the company almost. Pretty good. Rayman. Who made Rayman? Rayman was created from something and was turned into Rayman. The was he like a body. was he like the was he like a super lum? He was he was created by the goddess. Like that 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 one oh, fairy. You're so close. Belinda, like Belinda the fairy. You, Batila the fairy. I can't believe you got that. <laughs> See? I love Rayman, that's why. So get off my back. <laughs> I didn't know Proto Man, but I got Rayman. <laughs> Oh my god, that's that's incredible! All right, Whoa, oh, that's some hate right there. Kung Fu Carlito, who made Crash Bandicoot answer? Who cares? He says, "Who cares?" He's a Bandicoot. <laughs> All right, uh, Kratos. Who made well, Kratos? That's a tough one. Cause I'm going to assume you want me to refer to the fact that who created the Kratos that we know, which is the angry guy. Which would be the gods, most particularly Zeus, because they screwed him. That's right. I was looking for Zeus. Zeus is the correct answer. See, I'm good at these origins. Pernell is killing it, Carlos. You are right. I need to come up with quizzes that will that will stump my friends, but I am always I'm always surprised, impressed, and infuriated <laughs> about how how much you know about these games. Uh, the goose. I'm how about this? The goose from Untitled Goose Game. Mother Goose. <laughs> See, I've never even played that one. So that's a killer. Like, was there some actual, like, an actual no, human that made I, him I, angry? This was the joke. He was created by the devil. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I made that one up. I like it, though. And that's it. Thank you for playing. The origin so I think I actually quiz. got. So I think that technically means I got eight then, because I missed Proto Man, and I missed the Goose. The Goose. The goose, the. <laughs> so at that point, let me see what people guessed in here. Going back up. Well, I can't scroll up. This being a jerk. Oh, there it is. 7 out of 10. Oh, Stephen Miller. Guest 8. Oh. So he totally won. So when the episode is over, uh, email us. Um, let us know your console of choice and region. And I will see about getting you that code. All right. So now, we're now remember, this is eShop credit. So like PSN or Xbox Live or Switch. Or hell, even Steam. All right. So um, our next uh, email came from Bedroth, Pernell. Ooh. Bedroth, the host of the Very Good Music VGM podcast, the VGM VGM podcast. Um, he says, uh, this was really hard to narrow down, but I super enjoyed both the Positive Jams and Lucky Jams episode. He did spell jams as James. <laughs> I almost said James. Positive James. I see. That's a, I wish we could name that. Do that. Positive. Name the episode Positive James. Positive James. No, we can't. It has to be podcast anniversary five. Positive James. Positive James. I'm just call it positive James. Um, <laughs> uh, they were both uh, the perfect antidote to the uncertainty of the pandemic's beginning, and they helped me get through a rough patch between jobs. Excuse me. Um, one song that was featured on Lucky Jams could easily have been featured on both is the special stage music from Sonic 3. It's an all-time favorite and a just wonderful, beautiful song that is very different from anything else on its outstanding soundtrack. Keep up the great work, dudes. Here's to five more very good video game music filled years. So that's awesome. So thank you. Thank you, Bedroth, for that note. Thank you. Yes. Um, so we both picked, I think, some Sonic tunes. And I started to explore the Sonic Forces soundtrack, which I never really did before because I just. Discovered- also, we should. Hmm? I'm sorry, I just realized before we go on, we should point out the reason why we're not playing Special Stage from Sonic 3 is specifically because. It's something that Rob already chose, so it's not that we're not choosing his track. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I just and also I wanted to play some more music. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I, what I found was one of my favorite all-time Sega composers, Naomi, I'm oh, sorry, Nayafumi Hataya, worked on this game, Sonic Forces. Um, Nayafumi Hataya worked on Rystar. He worked on is. the Hybrid Front. He worked on uh, Nights into Dreams, and he did Space Channel Five. So he is a funky man. 
That's a sweet pedigree across the board, honestly, yeah. especially friggin' Knights. It really is. So we're going to hear that the track is called Ghost Town, and it's from Sonic Forces, and it is composed by Naifumi Hataya. How spooky is it? How spooky is it? <laughs> listening to Ghost Town from Sonic Forces, composed by Naofumi Hataya, rocking out those FM synthesizers. Oof. It sounds like a long-lost Genesis track. It sounds, it sounds like a, cla- it sounds like something, it sounds like a pop song from the 90s, and I can't put my finger on it. But it's, it's got this, every little bit to it sounds very, um, like, lyrical without having lyrics to it. It just, it sounds like a pop song. I also got to say... Way. I love like this really hard staccato like stabs on the chords. It's super, super fun. This this track is amazing. I also got to say that I'm, a, I'm genuinely surprised that this was the track because I haven't heard the entire Sonic Forces OST clearly because I've just heard this for the first time. But all the tracks I have heard are fairly typical Sonic sounds. Like, my favorite track that I've heard is Luminous Force, which is rockin very speedy uh this is very different <laughs> in a good way but still very different and now i want to listen to more of the ost because like unfortunately the game got kind of panned yeah i still have it downstairs i got it on deep 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 <laughs> discount um but nonetheless i bought it because i was like well, well maybe i'll try something but now maybe i'll do it just to hear the ost in game yeah, I don't know where this plays. This is a game I'm probably never going to play. I never liked 3D Sonic games. Um, it's just... I think you're in the majority there. Yeah, I mean, it started with Sonic Adventure. I played through it, but... I mean, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I think my gripe with the, with the 3D games is that I genuinely like them. The problem is they almost never get it right mm. as far as, like, glitch-free, error-free gameplay. But when it actually works, I think is personally the best way for a Sonic game to flow because they designed this cool character to be a contrast to Mario and they made his signature element speed. And yet all the 2D games, they are designed in a way that sort of segments where it's just kind of scripted, you can never really get that sense of speed because you're crashing in the freaking trick spikes all the damn time. Yeah. It's like, hey, oh look, we're going on this ramp. This is great. Oh. Unseen wall spikes, and you can't stop because you're going too fast. Whoa, that's Sonic, baby. It feels um, like, um, like there's Crash Bandicoot levels where you're running towards this camera, where, like, like how are you supposed to know what's coming up? You know, like, that's it's like, oh, the difficulty is that you won't be able to see. I'm like, no, it's not. that's not difficulty. That's just being blind. Yeah, it's cheap and ineffective it's, gameplay. It's running blind. Um, Meanwhile, so yeah, Sonic you know, Adventure, 3D. running blind. Yeah, but then you get the 3D Sonic games. Well, the ones when he started, what, as people affectionately call them, modern Sonic, where or ineffectionately depending, and uh, the camera's placed behind him, and while people dislike that to an extent, 
the reason why it works so well is because now you get the entire playerscape in front of you. You can see what's coming. So if they make Sonic run quickly, you get ample time to see what's approaching you because you're running towards the screen. Are you running away from the screen? So I think it works. It's just they have to get it so that when you do turns and when you do jumps and such, the controls can keep up with the ambition of giving you Sonic at his actual trademark speed. And it works! Like in the chemical plant zone of Sonic Generations, oh my god, it works! It is so good! But, again... Gen Generations, that was the one where they kind of like, they did side-scrolling and 3D and kind of blended them together, right? It's yeah. still probably one of the best Sonic games ever made. That is very, very impressive to, to watch. It's so good. And when I was getting into it, I was S-ranking stages, something I was not doing in other 3D Sonic games. But I loved it that much that I was like, I can do this one. I can pull this off. Now, and I was mastering the level layout. But strangely enough, you didn't pick music from Sonic Generations. I did not. In fact, I picked music from one of my least favorite <laughs> Sonic 3D games. Not because of design or anything, but again, this game had the, the antithesis of good controls or what the game had intended for it to work. It was glitched out the wazoo. But what is that game? Sonic Heroes! And the track is Emerald Challenge Special Stage, composed by Jun Sonoe and Fumi Kumitani. Sonic Heroes! <laughs> <laughs> Cha-cha slides and the cream corn. <laughs> what? Do the cream corn. I did. I did record you screaming. Do the cream corn. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. You're listening to the Emerald Challenge special stage from the game Sonic Heroes, which was released on 
pretty much every console from that generation, Xbox, PS2, GameCube, ooh, 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 composed by Jin Sonoe and Fumi Kumatani. So this is another case of the game being kind of... <laughs> but the OST is a banger. An absolute banger. And this track is no friggin' exception. It is probably my favorite special stage theme in the franchise, which is why I picked it, because I figured, since we couldn't play Bedroth's special stage theme, I wanted to play what I felt was the, my favorite you know, special stage theme. Um, so Sonic Heroes is a example of a good idea for a 3D Sonic game executed poorly in a variety of ways. Uh, one, the general gameplay concept was that you were three characters of various groupings, but they always had a very similar structure. One was speed focused, one was power focused, and one was flight focused. The problem was, uh, a lot of the time, those mechanics didn't even properly work in the game itself when you selected the character. Like, Tails could fly, but if you were in an area where you weren't meant to fly, the game loved to kind of keep you grounded because why let you do things you're not supposed to do? You're walled in. And other times you could fly, but the flight mechanics didn't actually let you fly at the level that Tails was meant to fly. It just would glitch out and you just fall. Um, there were areas where you were supposed to be swinging on vines and you'd go to swing, grab the vine and you'd just clip right through it and die. <laughs> uh, there, were, there were just some bad, bad elements that needed serious game testing. Yeah, so not a lot of testing was probably done on this one. Yes, yeah. but there was one level that did work quite a bit, and that level was the Egg Fleet, which is like, when I actually finally suffered through the game and beat it, that was a level I would always go back to to hear the awesome track from it, and also to play the stage. Now, one thing I found the most funny about this game is that when I first bought it, this was back when Hatred for 3D Sonic was at its all-time high, in my opinion. People were like, another 3D Sonic game? This is stupid. Give us a real Sonic game. And uh, I bought it because I wanted my friends to realize this is a great game. So I flew up to Chicago to hang out with some friends of mine out there. And we went to the one friend's house with a big party going on with games running in one floor and drinking and hanging on the other or whatever. Right. And I set up Sonic Heroes in the basement on the GameCube. Everyone's out there now, having a good time and partying and drinking, and so I played Sonic Heroes in the basement. <laughs> no, we, no we, we, there were people down there playing video games, too. The whole house was interacting <laughs> in its own way, trying to act like I was hiding. No, they're like, Come on. Pernell, you go in the basement. You go in the basement and play Sonic Heroes. You can't have fun. Fine, I'll have the real party, guys. <laughs> no, but like, we were all hanging out. A group of us were in the basement playing the game. And have you ever had a situation where you <laughs> wanted people to like a game? So you're trying to convince them to like it, yeah, at the same time, you don't like it. Mm. So you're talking against your own personal feelings to convince people to like a game you've already decided is crap. That was me with Sonic Heroes. I'm like, oh, come on, guys. You got to understand, this game is great. You just have to get used to the fact that you clip through vines if you hit them at the wrong angle. You had it at the exact right angle. That's masterful game design, guys. Come on. It's all you got to excuse, it's all gotta excuse it. It's all intentional. You're still learning how to get the 3D right, guys. It's a masterful game. It's a fantastic product. They, I, just, they just figured out how to make polygons, man. It's... <laughs> and then by the time I got to the Frog Force, and I'm trying to run from the gator, and I kept dying because of clipping issues when no one was looking like, stupid. Stupid control of the floor and wall of the I hate this. Dumb. Um, but, hey, at the end of the day, it had good music, and most of my friends don't remember that story anymore. Which means I'm off the hook. That's well, uh, now we all know it. So you're oh, on the hook. But you guys are cool, hook, man. No, you guys are cool. It's okay. I, I, just, pass it I just love like going the basement and play Sonic Heroes, for now. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a shirt. I'm gonna say it's that like, forever. I'm gonna say that like from now on. Go <laughs> on the basement and play Sonic <laughs> Heroes. All right. Put all your least favorite friends. I'm gonna turn We're... this track down. <laughs> Sonic <laughs> Heroes. <laughs> Because I think I think Pernell, I think Pernell should uh, come out of the basement, um, and we're going to the part of the show that we call the bonus round. Bonus round in the basement. <laughs> the bonus round is where we play covers and remixes and arrangements on our theme, and we have one last email, and this is from Stephen Miller. Um, and Stephen Miller would like to say, um, aside from the obvious changes, wait, 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 wait. let me read this one because you read the Bedroth one. Um, oh, you're right. Two for two. Two for two. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's go back. Blah, 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 blah. Rewind. <laughs> I want to read too. I want to be the cool voice. 
<laughs> All right, let's go. So this was from um, listener and friend Stephen Miller. Aside from the obvious changes all of us went through, this year changed how I listened to the podcast. I used to listen to it on my commute. I live about 45 minutes from my place of work at the time, so I had enough time to listen to almost the entire episode on the drive, and usually I'd finish it on the way home. In May, after the trouble started, in earnest where I live, I lost my job. Spent about a month out of work. During that time, I listened at home, where I picked up a new listener. My wife started listening during the day with me and got hooked just like I had. Now, what used to be a solo activity is now something enjoyed with a loved one, and we look forward to the live stream every month. Sometimes the children sit still long enough to listen, so I guess that officially makes you a family show now. Happy five years, guys, and here's to many more. Peace, my dudes. Yes, I'm so happy that we could bring some some positivity and some joy to some people. So thank you. I smiled from ear to ear when I saw that at work. I was like, this is like this makes the work day better. <laughs> right here. It felt good. Mm. All right. So I chose a bonus round track that I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I can't remember if there was a thread connected to this, but I don't think there is. Um, so this is going to be the, uh, corneria or sorry, the corneria. Yeah. Corn area from star Fox. Cream this is corn area. The corn area, the cream corn area, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cream corn area, Eurobeat remix from star Fox by Dominic Ninmark. Because I can't get enough of this guy's tunes. I'm really That's why it. you brought him up earlier. Hmm? That's why you brought him up earlier. Yes, because I I fell in the rabbit hole listening to all of his OSTs and all of his Eurobeat remixes because he's done quite a few of them. So here <laughs> we go. The Corn Area remix from Star Fox.
And we're back. That was the Corneria Eurobeat remix from Star Fox. That one was arranged by Dominic Ninmark. So I'm really, really impressed by all of his Eurobeat remixes, obviously. So go to uh, dominicninmark.bandcamp.com. It's, it's got a lot of really good... All of his game OSTs are there, but um, you can follow the links to his SoundCloud and his YouTube page if you want to hear more remixes like this one because they're, they're super fun. I may need to look into some of those Yorubis because I've only heard his game OSTs. I never looked into his remix category, um, albums. Yeah, it's like it's like he can't stop making more music, so he just keeps doing it. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. So you picked some tunes too, and I wasn't sure what you were going to go with. I got a feeling the second choice might go good for the end of the episode jam. Okay. But uh, that I went with the idea of the theme of family because of Stephen Miller's testimonial about how him oh. and his wife now watch the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. That's what that was about. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the cream corn area and children <laughs> that just resonates, resonates, or is that marinates? I don't know. But in my case, I actually did go with the theme of family. So... I actually end up picking the the shop theme from Legacy of the Wizard. Now, keep in mind, the original track I was going to pick was the home theme, which would have made sense because, you know, the game is about family working together to defeat the evil dragon, and they all meet up at home. But I didn't like that track as much. I wanted the shop theme. So, <laughs> it's like close but not exact. So... Shop theme from Legacy of the Wizard on the NES, composed, composed by Yuzo Koshiro. Composed by Yuzo Koshiro. <laughs> <laughs> I am it, Kirby. Welcome back. You're listening to the shop theme from the game Legacy of the Wizard on the NES composed by Yuzo Koshiro, or as Mike Myers likes to call it, Legacy of Poochie and the eight family members holding him back. And I genuinely, that's a very accurate statement because for those who aren't familiar with Legacy of the Wizard, you control five different family members. There's also a grandparents that you don't control. They just live in the house. Mm. Um, they do passwords and stuff. But uh, you go into the dungeon and you look for key items, like their crowns, I believe, which you need to eventually defeat the evil dragon. Each family member has this unique ability that allows them to traverse the dungeon in a different way. The dog is Poochie, the family dog, and his ability is it actually Poochie? is that his name is actually Poochie, and his ability is he doesn't take damage, pretty much anything. He doesn't get damaged by monsters. I think he's immune to spikes, if I remember correctly. He literally can just run the dungeons willy nilly <laughs> without being afraid. The, the reason why you can't beat Poochie. <laughs> Legend of Poochie. The only reason that you can't beat the game with Poochie, though, well, I don't know, maybe someone out there figured out that you can, is that certain family member abilities are things that are necessary for different sections of the dungeon that Poochie can't do, such as pushing heavy blocks. Poochie mm. can't do that. But the father can. Um, she can't do that. So, um, there's an area where you have to be able to jump extremely high to get to certain ledges. Daughter can do that. Poochie can't. But Poochie if can't there's some kind that. of cool... Poochie can't. But if Poochie can find some cool boots that give him spring-loaded feet, 
Gucci can do Guess that. Guess what? Gucci can do that. Gucci can. Um, but this game was. This could have easily come up in my rental in the rental reflections episode we did because I used to rent the Living Daylights How Legacy oh, yeah. of the Wizard, and I didn't actually I actually ended up buying it eventually at Magfest like in my mid early thirties because I saw it on a table. And I was like, you know what? I deserve to own this game. I love Legacy of the Wizard so much. It would be at the time the only NES cart I had. Later followed by a signature copy of uh, Castlevania II signed by James Rolfe because. Well, that's to me like that's like my favorite episode of his from the Angry Video Game Nerd. Um, and then I had a bag of like NES games that a mutual friend of ours was like, "Here, my wife's <laughs> telling me I gotta get rid of these. Do you want them?" I was like, "Yes." Did I, did I tell and the story about how very like, too many games I tried to buy the Genesis off of James Rolfe, and then he signed it, and I was like, "No, you didn't." I was like. I guess he assumed that I wanted it signed, but I just wanted his Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted Genesis. So at the end of the year, uh, we were at the um, uh, uh, the Retro World Expo in Connecticut, and I, I we had like a quiz game, and I gave it away. And everyone, someone was really excited about it. <laughs> you were like, I just wanted a Genesis. Now this one's got all this ink on it. Yeah, I got all this ink on it. I was like, thanks, man. <laughs> I like what you do. <laughs> I will admit, though, like, for me, the copy of Castlevania 2 makes sense to have his signature because he has a personal relationship with it in his in his media. But I'm not grasping the Genesis relationship. I don't think there is one. I, I'll say this. Um, it's, the- it's interesting it's because Mike Myers is in the chat, our friend. Um, and uh, I did not know about the Angry Video Game Nerd until one night. It was at the condo. You and Mike were hanging out with, a, with a, me and my wife. And before we went somewhere... He put up like the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode, and it was like wait, this is like pre YouTube, or YouTube was just starting, you know? No, it couldn't have been pre YouTube. Because are you sure? No, yeah, 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 been- yeah, yeah. But it was like it was early. It was still early YouTube, and it was on screw screwattack.com or something like that. One of those one of those video aggregate sites, and um, it was. I thought it was hilarious, and now I I can't get into it because it's just I don't know. It's just not my kind of humor anymore. Yeah, I get, I get that, but they always makes me laugh. Those when there's folks that think he's serious, like, I can't understand. He's such an immature man. I'm like, no, they no, yeah. the fact that he's an immature man on the show. It's just, just how it works. Them's the jokes. Um. Anyway, so for more information on our bonus round, go to rhythmandpixels.com. We'll have links to uh, the band camps and sound clouds and everywhere where you can go and buy the music, stream the music, and support these artists. All right, thanks for joining us on episode 25-8 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is our kind of our second celebration of five years of the show with our Patreon um, live, live, liveness, liveliness, right? <laughs> <laughs> Lively, livelihood. Yeah, like the Patreon friends and fan base. It's, it's a good time hanging out, chatting. And I honestly do like seeing people comment and talk in the chat yeah. because... We have our email and we have the discords and all that stuff. And to be honest, I try to keep I and we, we try to keep up and communicate as much as we can when people talk. Yeah, but, but this is me, a very think, interactive way to do the show, and I, I I do enjoy that. I concur. And it's just it may seem kind of goofy or lame or whatever. I don't know how people want to perceive it, but I genuinely like interacting with our listener base. Because keep in mind, I was just talking earlier about you know some of the you know rougher elements of the Persona fan base, for example. Mm-hmm. I don't think any of the people we've interacted with have been that level where it's like, talk to that guy. Like, because everyone we've interacted with has been fairly solid people. Like, there's good folks. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they're, they're down to earth. They like video games. Um, they aren't aggressive about opinions. And this stuff was like, if I were to come on here and say, you know, I'm not going, this isn't true because I don't know enough about it to say, but if I was like, God of War's a stupid franchise, no one's going to write me a letter and go, hey, I heard you don't like God of War. Yeah. I'm going to stab you. I mean, pe- people like, do like to make fun of like which Final Fantasy that you love, but I feel like that's a normal thing, right? Like, that's just what... Like, that's just... That's what friends do. That's just they say happen. Final Fantasy VIII's yeah. terrible, or that you play Final Fantasy X a lot, or that Purnell's insane for liking Six so much. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, that's friend ribbing, mm-hmm. you know, and that's cool. And I like the fact that we have a pretty diverse, awesome friend base in this 
community that we can talk to, write letters, and or be like, hey, for example, like Solus is a, to the point where I'm like, hey, I, want, I need to get this weird art thing done. You know, it's like it's not a matter of being like, hey, I gotta find this random person. I'm like, no, Solus, I want to do it because I we've interacted with her enough. I'm like, we can have that conversation. You know, Stephen Miller can be like, hey, you know. Let's talk about you know talk about some you know, some cool awesome music that you're listening to. Tell me about some new some of your current jams. Um, Wicked Sephiroth throws down some banging recipes. I mean, we have good people that we interact with, and we only know them because of the ship. It's crazy. Again, freaking Carlito. We played through La Mulana together. We got Cameron Worma who's booting up La Mulana too right now, and he's just got me to buy trying today. I mean, that's just how it goes, and. Again, when we started this show, did you expect any of that kind of stuff? Or were you just like just like me, where you were like, we're going to do this show, we might get one listener, and that's cool, but it's ultimately just having fun. Uh, Wicked Sephiroth says he doesn't know if people like to uh, make fun of others so much about what their favorite is, but they like to assert which one is their own, which I think is true. But in my case, it's kind of a running gag that I just play Final Fantasy X over and over again. And just ignore every other game in the series. <laughs> and I can really, honestly, and there's nothing. As long as you're, as long as you're okay with it, it's totally. If you're not okay with it, we would. I would be like, nope, no more of that. But I, I, it's probably, gonna, it's probably just gonna play it once a year. Is, is what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, because there's something to be said about running gags like that too. It's not on this show. It's on SNL, SML. But the running gag for me there is that there's this game called Ori in the Blind Forest, and uh, it's a beloved game by pretty much everyone on the show. And they convinced me to start playing it. They're like, you got to try this game. You're going to love it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it. And I started playing it for a bit. It's a beautiful game. The music is fantastic. I like the skill tree system it's got. But I got sidetracked. I literally just stopped playing it for reasons that don't even make logical sense. And I went back. And at first it was just because, well, I haven't made time yet. But when I get a chance, I'm going to go back. But then every time they learned I hadn't made progress, it's like, oh, come on, Pernell. Ori, you got to play Ori. Then it just became, you know, I'm not gonna play, I'm not gonna play Ori right now. Oh man, you know what I didn't beat today? Ori in the Blind Forest, <laughs> and it just became a fun little running gag. Like it's not that I just like the game; I think it's great. But it's for the gag. I'll talk trash about it because it's fun. Um, but if I were being serious with somebody, and someone was really talking to me like, "Why do you hate my favorite game so much?" I'm not gonna be a jerk. Yeah, I'm I like actually, I love the game. You and I are not like that at all. I, I feel like uh, uh, making fun of what someone else enjoys is is like the worst possible thing you can do on the internet. It's it's so hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, there's really game, no wrong way to have fun, right? So it's just like if you're having fun, just play. And I'll confirm that right now for anyone who's listening. If you're like, but Pernell, you do it all the time for Final Fantasy VIII. I personally dislike the game, and I like to make jokes about things about the game I don't like. Because in that context, I think it's just humorous and it's funny. But if you came up to me and very passionately was like, I love Final Fantasy VIII. It is my favorite Final Fantasy VIII. Um, my favorite Final Fantasy of the ball. Final Fantasy VIII is my favorite Final Fantasy VIII. No crap. Oh, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong for liking it. I'm not going to say, what a terrible idea that is. There's so many better games. All I'll say is, I'm glad to hear it. Tell me more about why you like it. And I'm cool with that. It's all about what you like and being passionate about what you like. And it's cool to have that back. I kind of do the end. Remember right now, um, it's cool to have the back and forth about it. And it's all in good fun and debate, but don't call anybody out for being like, as a jerk or saying yeah. they likes just because they like something. Don't call them a jerk because that makes you a jerk. Yeah, that's that, that, that point, that, I don't that, care what you the, like. Uh, the end. Remember at the end, it'll be, don't be a jerk or go in the basement and play Sonic Forces. <laughs> go to play Sonic, play Heroes. Sonic Heroes. Play Sonic Heroes in the basement. Um, anyway, we, we want to hear about your passion. We want to hear um, maybe some track suggestions or topic suggestions or games that you're into. We want to hear all about that. So uh, please send us an email. Rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. And if you want to know more about our show, if you want to see a full track listing from the episode and all of our episodes and access to all of our episodes, including all of like the first hundred or so which i think aren't on the feed right now go to the website rhythmandpixels.com uh, check us out on youtube and um yeah youtube.com slash rhythmandpixels all of our episodes are uploaded there as well and we also have a 24 7 live stream 
running nothing but 8-bit and 16-bit classics and deep cuts. And that just um, gets updated once a month with new tracks. And if you have any track suggestions or, if you want, uh, or suggestions for the radio station, you can check out our Discord server. Our Discord server is linked on our website in the menu bar at the very top of that thing there. It just says Discord. Click on the button. It goes right there. Uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. It's uh, Rhythm and Pixels, all one word. We have a little group called Rhythm and Pixels Chat where we talk about... Um, we try to do like a game of the month where we all play the same game together or try to finish a, a certain number of games within a month. Try to get through Purnell's backlog as best as he can. And he's it's work- a challenge. It's a challenge. He's working on it. Um, and if you'd like to support the show, we, we really honestly just tell people about it. Um, tell people that you know, the, the, about the music that you love and that maybe you like our show too. And you can also support us by going to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. There you get access to a, a prequel episode every week. Which, because of the um, the anniversary shows, we haven't put one together yet, but they'll be back up. And you also get access to a live streamed episode like this one uh, once a month. And we'd like to thank all of our members at the end of every episode: uh, Frankly Zappa, That Nick Walker, Mike Myers, Ed Wilson of the VG Embassy, Matt's Holmkvist, Michael Jennings, Davy Cakes, Justin Schneider from XVGM Radio, Sonic Medley, Taco, Harold Howard, David Taylor, Ryan Hart Selkova, Andreas Milberg. Dan Loughton, Sleepy S'more, Stephen Miller, The Autistic Gamer 89, Cameron Worma, Christopher Shenstrom, Bobby Arson from One Up Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, Carlos, Kung Fu Carlito from the Heroes 3 podcast. Good to see you tonight. Um, and Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version VGM podcast. And Brian Pitt. Uh, Michael Bridgewater is actually putting together a uh, Commodore 64 playlist to add to the radio station soon. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, but anyway, thank you all very much for your continued support of our little show. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to Purnell. It means a lot to both we're, of us. We're hoping to still come up with as many topics as we possibly can, because it's kind of a funny thing in that we do cover repeats every once in a blue moon, but we generally are fairly good about not repeating topics. It's almost like a fun little staple of our show. And so, And we always have to make sure we say we have had repeats, so no one comes back and says, mm-hmm. what about that one time on episode 45-6? When Itchy and Scratchy went into the dungeon without the wizard's key. In which case, like, well, that's incorrect. But we love trying. And I think it's really cool that uh, um, Bedroff came up with a really cool one that we're going to have to try to do because I've never even focused on this idea before. Songs representing characters you never want to see in Smash. That's a hard one, but also a large part of what will make it so fun. Um, But to quote us another Simpsons quote, because we'd love to do that. Have no fears. We've got episode topics for years. We we'll honestly keep doing it. do. Um, <laughs> and there's but a still few, submit some. I'm looking at our list right now. There's a ton on here. Um, some of the episodes I'm looking forward to doing is uh, Sega Channel games. Uh, so I know that you have a lot of experience with the Sega Channel network from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, too Many Mechs. That should be fun. And uh, Gardening. Uh, games about gardening or with gardening in it. Yes. And um, jingles, where Purnell and I are going to write short um, commercial jingles to video game music, and you have to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> Our condolences in advance. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, so uh, next week we have a special show with a guest, hopefully. Um, hopefully all that, that works out. There's a huge time zone difference. But um, otherwise, back to your regularly scheduled program on NPR. No. Um, <laughs> thanks for listening to the show. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Purnell. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. Have a good evening. And remember, because I have another one. Oh, good. Suckers. Uh, kind of goes off of what Stephen Miller said earlier in his testimonial. Like I said, I love that testimonial so much because it resonates with me for a very specific reason. It's not just because it's about our show, which is awesome, but also the fact that he was able to take something that he likes and share it with his family. It became a family group activity. And I can certainly wholeheartedly say that in my time on the internet and with friends, I've spent more than my fair share of time talking to people that have families, whether it be a wife and or husband or kids. And they talk about interacting with them sometimes as if it's like, oh, man, I got to spend time with the family. And like, this sucks. Like, I want to do something else. Which I get sometimes you don't want to be under your family you know, the whole t- all the time. You want to get out. But same time, you should want to spend time with your family. You should want to engage with them. And a good way to do that is to take something you like and share it with them. Make it a group activity that you can all look forward to. It's just freaking smart. It makes sense. I mean, 
Why not do that? You get to not kill two birds with one stone. You're out with your family and doing things that are fun. And if you love hanging out with your family, that's double the fun. So why the heck not do it? It's just crazy to ignore it. Give it a shot. I like beverages that are made of water primarily, and that's great. <laughs> Have a good night. Good night.